So I watched the Apple announcement today, and it started off with them talking about the new Apple Arcade. And I got really excited because I like some games, and $5 a month? That's not bad. And then I started thinking to myself, should everything have a streaming model? Is this good for anyone? Let's talk about that on today's Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about streaming models, not so much Apple, so if that was your concern, don't worry about it. But before we get into that, uh, if you hear any sounds in the background, we have two beautiful new little gray kittens in the house, and they're really, really tiny, and they're right next to me in a big old house so that they can be safe because you know they're tiny and i'm afraid one of the other animals might accidentally hurt them so if you hear them in the background that that's what's going on check out my instagram there are pictures <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of them figured out what to do with my instagram cat photos how original by the way if you're curious they're named minerva and mcgonagall so, if you <laughs> haven't already, please do take a moment to rate this podcast in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. It tells the algorithm to share the podcast with more people. The more people that listen, the bigger the community. The bigger the community, the better the chance we get to actually talk to one another. And after all, that's why I do this in the first place. So, thank you very much. Okay, so I'm sitting there watching the Apple announcement because if you're new to the show, I, I live in the house of Apple because I do. We cut the cord long before a lot of other people did, and so we started with an Apple TV way back, first generation. That's how we got our entertainment for the longest time. And we still have an Apple TV and a HomePod, and I'm recording this on a Mac with my iPhone sitting next to me, with my iPad in the cubbyhole over there getting charged. My Apple Pencil is sitting beside it, making sure it has a good charge in case I decide to do any art. So, needless to say, I'm one of those people that gets kind of excited when there's an Apple announcement because, you know, who knows what they'll bring out that I might, you know, dream about being able to afford one day. Especially because, you know, I think we need a new Apple TV because... Yeah, ours is starting to have some buffering issues. But anyway, I'm watching the announcement, and they start by talking about the new Apple Arcade. And it, I'm not going to do any comparisons between it and Google Stadia or any of the other stuff that's going on. But I'm watching this, and I'm getting kind of excited because I love games, and I don't have a lot of money. You know, this is one of those topics that comes up a lot on the podcast. I don't have a lot of money. And they're like, it's $5 a month. And I'm like, ooh, $5 a month. All I can eat games for my iPad, my Mac, my Apple TV. And it looks like they're going to have a lot of really cool games. Ooh, 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 that's exciting. And then I started thinking, how much money are these game developers going to be making on these games? Because I know how much music people make off of the streaming services that, let's all be honest, we probably have. Can you guess what service I have? Yeah, it's Apple Music because I was actually a Beats subscriber back before Apple bought them because I really liked the sentence. The sentence was the best thing to this day that has ever been in a streaming app. And of course, they got rid of it when they bought Apple Music. But anyway, um, I'd already built up a library over there. I didn't really like Spotify. It didn't work for me that well. I had tried pretty much every one. Anyway, but I know how little artists actually make off of streaming services. And I know this full well from Kindle Unlimited. Bum, bum, bum. Because, yeah, I had my work in Kindle Unlimited for quite some time. And 
Yeah, it was nice to get checks from Amazon on a fairly regular basis because I did, but man, I didn't make a lot of money off of it. Like when you look at how much I was getting per book and well, it just didn't work for me. And I didn't like the exclusivity that went with it. But that's a whole other story that I've talked about a little bit previously and probably will talk about again. But everything's moving to streaming. You can do your unlimited books. There's a lot of services for that. You can do unlimited streaming from countless video services now, each with their own library and wanting you to pay them extra just to have them because Sony's going to have one, y'all. Because of course they are. Of course they are. Of course they are. And as excited as I am about this, because, you know, I like my Netflix. I like it a lot. I I, I like the DCEU app. I'm sorry, DC Universe, whatever they're calling it. DC Universe app. I like to read my comics. I like the Marvel Unlimited because I like to read my comics. And it's affordable for me to read comics that way, especially considering how much I'd have to pay if I... Had to buy them issue by issue. And, yeah. But I know how little these services make. See, the advantage, if you're a business, for running a streaming service rather than actually selling individual products is that you have a guaranteed income, for the most part. See, most people that subscribe, once they go through the pro process of subscribing, are unlikely to unsubscribe. I had a Pandora account for such a long time that I kind of just forgot to unsubscribe to because, well, you never know, I might start using Pandora again and it's only five bucks. Yeah, I'm one of those people, like most people. And so the safety net for a company of being able to roughly guesstimate how much money they're going to make a month based off of their current subscriber base. There's a security there that as a creative industry, as in show business, whatever, that that's nice. That's nice to have. But the problem with that is figuring out how to equitably share that money amongst all of the people that are in fact, getting their work published there. Now, I don't have any inside scoop about how much Stadia or Apple are going to be paying developers for their games to be on their platforms or anything like that, because, again, that's not what this is about. See, the biggest problem that I have with this is, is it's training people that content is virtually free. And that's problematic at best, especially somebody like me who makes content. I write books, I'm doing the world building over at World Anvil, I do these podcasts, and the podcasts are free. The stuff over at World Anvil is free. The stuff I put up on my website is free. If I ask you to buy a book, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you want money? And I'm not saying that about like you in particular, it's just... You know, I get that reaction from people because so much of the content that I make is free because I, like a lot of creators, have gone on to the patronage model. I believe that if I do content that's good enough, people that like it will eventually join my Patreon or hit this community support tab and give me a little bit of money every month. I don't ask for a lot. I ask for a dollar. Dollar's not that much. But it adds up. Enough people, and that's a pretty good living. But, yeah. I'm also training people that my work should basically be free. Unless you love it exactly enough to give up your hard-earned money. Oh, wait. And that's a big problem for us creators. Especially for those of us who are wanting to have, say, a TV series someday. I would love to have a TV series based on any of the books that I'm doing or currently working on. I think that would be great. That would be awesome. That's kind of been a dream of mine. But see, now I have to be concerned of 
if it gets turned into a series because we don't have cable TV anymore and we're all doing these streaming services, well, of course, it's not going to be on CBS All Access because, well, they don't make the best shows, at least haven't so far, and they don't have a huge subscriber base, so that's not really the right place for it. Amazon Prime's done some nifty stuff, but I don't really know how influential they are. Maybe Netflix? Oh, what about Disney? What if Disney asked? Do I really want to turn any of my characters into Disney princesses? I mean, not that they really would, but you know what I'm saying. Because it's no longer about the work. It's about the platform. And it's about what people are willing to pay for the platform rather than pay for the book, for the movie, for the series, for whatever it is. And as much as I love my streaming services, and y'all know I really do love them, it's just not a good thing for us creatives to be relying on them. So, you know I took all of my work off of Kindle Unlimited, and it had nothing to do with Kindle Unlimited. I mean, I was making some money over there. It wasn't like great money, but it, you know, it was a regular monthly income. Which, as a writer, I have to say, knowing a lot of writers, any regular monthly income is good monthly income as a writer. Especially since I wasn't really doing too much to advertise or promote the work over there, it was just kind of doing itself. And I'm okay with that. I like that. That works for me. The problem is, and has been, that, well, I can't give my work away if it's tied to Kindle Unlimited. Because you have to be exclusive to be there. See, I can't have my work on Kobo or Apple Books or Barnes & Noble or anywhere else. I can't be on Wattpad or featuring them on my own site. I can't give my patrons copies of my book on Patreon because that violates the terms of service. See, the books have to be exclusive to Amazon. <laughs> and that's where I have a problem. I don't like that exclusivity deal. I don't want to lock my stuff up. And it's not that I went wide and now I'm making all this money from all these other sources. It's I would much rather rely on you all to make a living than Amazon. Amazon doesn't care about me. At least my fans who subscribe over at Patreon do. They actually care about me. They care about the work that I'm doing. And it's worth my in if effort and energy to try to get good work out. Honestly, Amazon, with their model, I just need to write some formulaic fiction, get it out real quick, get a couple series out, and just make money. Because that's kind of the model for KU. Not for everybody. I mean, there's some pe people that are doing good work that make money over there, but, you know, I don't know. But now, this literally means we have streaming services for everything. There are streaming services for games, comic books, books, movies, television. I can't think of one for audiobooks, but I'm sure there's one out there somewhere. Because Audible's not a... Well, no, that's true. Audible has, what is it, Audible Escapes? Or something like that, where it's just for romance books, and it's an additional charge, but it's all-you-can-eat romance novels? I forgot about that. They've started playing with that. So, coming soon to audiobooks near you. So, we creatives, we people who are trying to make a living, or at least some money, to support the work that we're doing, because I can tell you it's not cheap. Hosting websites, buying microphones when they break, paying for laptops. You know, it's not an easy, inexpensive thing to do. But now we have to choose whether or not we're going to give our fealty to these new feudal lords. And I'm really concerned about that because I'm really torn in half. And I'm wondering how many of you all are too. Because there's the consumer side of me who gets really excited about Apple Arcade. 
Because I have an iPhone, I have an iPad, I have an Apple TV, I have a Mac. These are games that are supposed to be able to be played on all of these things, on all of these platforms. And it's all you can eat. So if I don't like a game, I didn't waste money on it, and I can play and play and play and actually get to experience these games that I would like to. The consumer in me really likes it because I see it as the deal that it is. It's a good bargain for me. But the creative side of me feels like I should not be participating in this system. That I shouldn't be allowing myself to pay into the system that's going to lock creators down. Even if they're not required to be exclusive to the platform, or even if the exclusivity period is limited, they're still tying all their hopes on the benevolence of the company to give a reasonable portion of the money to the people that are making it. And just to go into the second half of this, I don't know if you heard or not, but if you buy a new Apple product, an iPad, an iPhone, I believe even a Mac or an Apple TV, they're going to give away a free year of Apple Plus, their Apple TV Plus, their, their streaming service. So you get it for free for a year for buying an iPad and a product from them. Really smart on their part, locks you down into the system, gets you really invested in it. But what's that going to do for the people that are making shows for them? Now, at least at this point, I'm not going to shed a tear because, you know, Steven Spielberg's got money. Oprah Winfrey, she's got money. You know, <laughs> these aren't poor, starving artists, at least at this point, on Apple TV+. Plus. But what if, I don't know, Google bought Netflix or tried to do their own Netflix and did the same thing for anybody who bought an Android device? Well, what is the percentage that you get if people aren't even paying a monthly fee? They just get it as an add-on for buying the device. Where does it end? And there is so much content out there now. And a lot of it's very good, some of it's okay, and some of it's just trash. But it's the way it's always been. The difference is now we have access to it. We pay our streaming fees and we can now watch the good, the bad, and the ugly all at once. And I'm not, like I said, the consumer side of me is not opposed to that. But should everything be on a streaming model? This is something that I think about a lot. And usually I try to present answers to you all on these podcasts, but this is just one of those questions that hopefully some of you will use the voice message system, which you'll find a link to in the show notes. And let me know your thoughts on this, because I think every day of the fact that I'm losing a couple bucks every month because I'm not getting that regular Kindle Unlimited check. Wasn't a lot, but it was something. And who knows, if I had invested more energy and effort into it, maybe I could have made it more of a thing than it currently is. I just don't know. And so I struggle with myself every day trying to figure out if I should go back because like I said it wasn't a lot of money but it was regular and that's really hard as a creative to pass up and I see this almost as this drip 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 of addictive funds going out to creative people locking them in to a business model that they have no control over, that they have no power over, and that they can't leave without losing everything. It's the problem of being on YouTube. YouTube says you're not there anymore, you've lost everything. Or Twitch, or any of those silos. It's one of the reasons why I always stuck to podcasting instead of doing one of those things, because with podcasting, I'm at least everywhere. And I've been through several different hosts over the years, and I'm 
currently with Anchor, and I really, really like them. But I know that I can put my work everywhere. They're owned by Spotify, but they don't require me to be exclusive to Spotify. I wouldn't do that. Because I don't want to lose my listeners that are in other apps. I don't know. I'm really nervous about this new world where everything has a streaming service for it. Where you can just pay your all-you-can-eat fee. And we writers, creators, get what little scraps remain. Please let me know what you think. I really would love some opinions on this. Like I said, in the show notes, you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short, keep it clean, so I can use it on the show. Or you can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. I'm C. Dorset on both. If you haven't already, please take a moment to rate this podcast in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. If you got a buck you can pass my way. I feel really self-serving saying that after this episode, but if you have a buck... You'll find a link to both my Patreon and the Community Support tab in the show notes. The difference between the two is the people on Patreon occasionally get stuff. If you don't have any money right now or you don't feel like giving, that's okay. But if you know somebody you think would like this podcast, do share it with them. That helps out a lot. Oh man, lots going on in my head. I will let you know if you want to do the homework, I'm going to be talking about Carnival Row tomorrow, because I said I was going to do that. And you technically don't have to have seen all of the show yet, because they released a tabletop role-playing game. And until I learn otherwise, I'm going to consider the information in there canon to the series. So we're going to be talking about the world of Carnival Row on tomorrow's episode of the podcast. You can find a copy of that over on the Nerdist website. I am interested in learning more. Until next time, don't forget, have the fun. Bye.